Nobody likes doing this. But there is value in that concept of chromaticism. This is an exercise that I came up with that is going to be the most fun exercise you've ever played. Now this does require you to have a loop pedal or a backing track, but if you don't have a loop pedal, no problem. I am going to give you the backing track in this video. It's going to happen at the end, so you can just come back to this video or rip the audio, I don't care. It's also available in Guitar Super System in the backing track section. There's a link down below for that. But here is the concept. The chromatic element that I'm going to take from that exercise, you're not even gonna realize that it came from that, but I'm just giving you the context. I'm gonna use a chord progression that's really fun to play over. And that chord progression is going to keep going down chromatically. So what this does is it removes your tendencies to play positionally. Let's say every guitar player loves to just start in E. <laughs> Let's say that's your home base. That's totally fine. It's a lot of guitar players' home base. But here's the thing. You can get stuck playing positionally and playing in certain areas of the neck, and that is what can cause you to get into ruts and other creative roadblocks. So what this exercise that I'm gonna show you does is it forces your fingers to move out of your comfort zones on the guitar neck, but also keeps you sort of Jedi mind tricked that you are not doing something new. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. And while this is happening, it is also simultaneously improving your improvisation. So your goal here is to be as interesting melodically as possible. And there are different tips that I'm gonna give you to achieve that goal, but here's the basic chord progression I'm gonna use. And keep in mind, you can start anywhere. I'm gonna start on B flat. That's it. So if you wanted to think about this in the key of B flat minor, we have one minor, the flat three major, the flat six major, the flat seven major. You can change the root chord and that's exactly what this exercise is going to entail because after we come to this flat seven major, we're gonna move up a half step and repeat that chord progression. That's it. You don't even have to understand music theory. Just learn this chord progression and when the fourth chord happens, move it up a half step and repeat that chord progression. This will give you a hypnotizing, awesome foundation to exercise your improvisation chops as well as improve your muscle memory and stretch your fingers out across the guitar neck. Here's an example of the backing track I'm going to be providing and shredding over. So I'm gonna play that whole improvisation in a minute, but I just wanna to get to a few tips. Use them, don't use them, but I figured I'd throw them out there just in case. So when you are switching, but basically between half steps, you don't really have to do too much to continue the phrases that you would be used to playing. So let's say we're starting in this B flat minor. <laughs> We have plenty of licks in this position that, that we're comfortable with. Now understanding that the next chord progression is going to put us in the key of A minor. If we're sticking in this B flat sound, that's not gonna work, but luckily we can take all the exact same ideas we're doing and just move it down a half step. However, that is really the first step that we want to quickly move on from because you don't really want to sound robotic when you're doing this exercise. You want each chord progression when it moves down a half step to sort of have its own identity. And the way to do that is obviously just to keep practicing and broadening your phrasing vocabulary, but understanding that you are just a half step away from your target zone doesn't necessarily mean you have to stick to the same exact licks. In fact, it's sometimes a good idea to move away from the current 
area of the guitar neck that you're playing in when you know the chord progression is about to go down that half step in order to remove yourself from playing the same licks over and over. So a way to do that is to just simply target different parts of a scale that you may be comfortable with. For example, let's just say we're in this B flat natural minor area. Now I know A is coming next, so maybe I can look and kind of anticipate that A coming and slide up to another position of the A pentatonic. So that would be like on the 12th fret. Another thing you can try is to actually ignore what I just said, but treat it as if you are developing a motif. And a way to do that would be to come up with a repeating phrase. can hear the phrase is while it's simple on its own it is effective and it's especially effective to kind of keep the listener engaged and understanding that the harmony is moving and yet keeping them comfortable so that's another strategy <laughs> Still another strategy is to sort of build your way up through a scale before the chord changes. How that sort of feels really wrong and then really right when the chord changes. And that's a really great ear training technique. Weave that in gracefully, if you will. So. That's a strategy for you. And finally, th really the biggest thing here is to just be musical. And that's why I think this exercise is so valuable. You can use any chord progression. I like this one because it's from one of my favorite guitar players, Joe Satriani. This is actually the bridge harmony from his song, Mysterion. But uh, this chord progression works really well. And I think that it's just a great landscape to kind of paint over as it were. A lot of exercises don't really yield very many pleasing aesthetic uh, experiences while you're doing them. They're obviously important to do. Running things with a metronome is sort of a rite of passage for any musician, but if you can be musical with your exercises, then I also encourage that. So I hope this is a helpful lesson for you. I'm gonna go ahead and rip over an abundance of chord changes and then I'm going to include at the end of this just the blank slate so no guitar solo of mine just the chord changes and you can come back to this video whenever you want to and use it for your practice or use a loop pedal and recreate it whatever you want the knowledge was mine and now it is yours I hope it serves you well until next time keep shredding